In this video, I want to simulate the rolling of two fair dice. Uh, each, each one has six sides and does the numbers one through six. So if it's a fair dice, it means that the numbers one through six all have the same probability of occurring when we roll the dice. We have two dice. We want to roll each dice a hundred thousand times. Then we want to sum the outputs of the two rolls of the dice, or of the rolls of the two dice. And we want to look at the histogram of that sum. Uh, I'm also going to look at the histograms of the individual dice rolls. So uh, this is how we're going to pull this all together uh, to simulate this probability experiment. So with this, let me begin here. I'm going to start with row one. I'm going to put the titles of what we're going to put in the rows. And I'll put die one. For those of you who are not sure, the singular of dice is die. Dice is the plural of die. Although I sometimes refer to a single dice, a single die, using the word dice. So die one and die two. And so how are we going to simulate the role of those two dice? Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to use the uh, same method that I used uh, earlier in another video. I'm going to put a function in here. I'm going to call it integer. Integer of uh, six times. Rand and then I'm going to add one and hopefully this will give us uh, the right answer what we're looking for every turn and uh, so what did I do here it didn't generate that I think what I did was I forgot to put my equal sign there now let's try it Okay, so, so you see what's going to happen here. Rand is a uniformly distributed random number between 0 and 1. When we multiply that by 6, we get a random number that's uniformly distributed between 0 and 6. And then we take the integer part of that number. So the integer part from 0 to 6 is either going to be 0 so for example, if we generated a fraction of, of 0.7, the integer part of that is 0. We're going to have the integer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is what the possible results are of doing this. And then we add 1 that gives us the numbers 1 through 6 rather than 0 through 5. So this is how we're going to get the... Uh, uh, the numbers here. Now, I've only got one. I don't have 100,000. So I could drag this down to I get to 100,000. Uh, or I could use the same method that I've uh, used previously for filling in columns. So let's see if we can make that work. Sometimes I do it and it doesn't work right and I have to redo it. So I click on this. I have A2. So I'm going to do A2 colon and then I'm going to do A to 100,000 and 1, just like that. Okay, now I hit return. And, oh, I forgot to do something here already. When I, this right here, I should have copied. There, copy. Now let me put this in here. A, uh, this is A3, okay, A3 colon A, 100,000 and 1 hit return and now I'm going to do a paste and then that fills that formula in all the way down here 
to 100,001. We can verify that. I drag all the way down here, here to, there we go, 100,001. You can see we have numbers all the way down there. And the numbers range in value one to six. Okay, now with that, I want to just copy everything over to the second column. So let me let me go down to the bottom there, just like that. There, now let me grab the corner and drag it over. And then that fills that in. Look at that. Amazing. Okay, so now we have a simulation for each dice. And we didn't get this. Here, let me drag this over. There. Each of two dice, we simulate 100,000 rolls. And now I want to generate histograms of this. I want to see what the probability is of getting a 1 and getting a 2 and so on. Okay, so I want to generate those histograms. Now, you remember how we generate histograms. Uh, I want to um, put bins in. So here we got bins, and my bins are going to go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In other words, I want to count all the 1s, all the 2s. Now let me shift click so I have those two bins selected and drag down to 6. So here I have 6 bins. I want to count up the number of instances in which each number appears in these sets of 100,000. Okay, and I'm going to use the frequency function to do that, if you remember. So I'm going to do a histogram. Let me just call it histogram 1. Histogram 1. Okay, now, remember how I do that histogram? I, I'm going to put equal. Oh, I need to select all the way down here, because my histogram is going to have uh, six terms in it, six columns, if you like. So I select all six first because histograms is an array function in Excel. So histogram, now I put equals frequency. There, function frequency pops up, so equals frequency. Now, first I put in the data array. The data array on the first histogram is going to be from A2 to A100,001. So I'll put A2 colon A100,001. Comma. Now I put in the bins. So I'll put click, shift click. And one more thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the C's. I'll need that in a minute. Dollar sign there, there. Now I hit return. Now, I made a mistake. I hit return, but because it's an array function, so let me go up, edit, and undo. And let me try typing that again. Equals frequency equals frequency um, A2 colon A100001 comma um, now I put the bins if click I said I put dollar signs here dollar sign dollar sign now I just don't hit return Remember, I do Control Shift Return. I, oh boy, I think I made another mistake here because I didn't select these things to begin with. Here, let me let me try to. Yeah, that's probably not going to work. I'm trying to just copy what's in there right now, so I can just paste it in in a minute. Okay. Undo typing. Oh. 
you know. You now let me try again. Select, select. Now I've got the the whole array chosen. Now I do equals. There equals f frequency, and I do uh, a two colon a one zero 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 one comma now control shift return and there it fills in everything okay finally got that right um, now, um, but I put it in the wrong column, you see, so let me try to copy that over to the correct column. There we go. And now we're going to do histogram 2. Okay, now what I'm going to try to do is just copy this whole thing here and slide it over like that. Now what have I done when I do that? Well, if you look right here, what I have is a frequency B2 to B100,001. So that's all the numbers down this column. And because I put a dollar sign in front of the C's, I'm still using these same bins, which is why I put the dollar sign in front of them. So this histogram is for the A column, here we A2 to A100,001, and this one's for the B column. So I'm getting exactly what I want there. So finally, I did something right here. Okay, now let's graph those histograms. So I click, shift click to select those six numbers. I go to insert, and then recommended chart, and I do there. So there's my histogram. Now, remember we saw this before. It's not starting at zero here. And uh, so it kind of makes this histogram look pretty uneven. And the histogram is actually much more even than that. So how are we going to fix that? Well, I'm going to right click on here, format axis area. Now I have the bounds, the minimum to maximum on the axis. The minimum is 16,450. That's shown right here. The maximum is 16,8. I want the minimum to be zero. So I do that, hit return, and then that fixes that axis. Now you see how flat that histogram is, which is what I would expect with 100,000 numbers. I expect the law of large numbers here is kicking in big time uh, so that my histogram looks almost like it's a perfect theoretical histogram. In chart title, let me just call this histogram one. There we go, hit return. So there's my histogram one, I don't want to hit return. There we go. Okay, histogram one. Now let me do histogram two right here. And um, again, I'm going to select these numbers. Let's see what happens if I select histogram one all the way down. Now I'm going to go to insert, uh, recommended chart, do this. And it's filling in histogram two, just like I thought it might. Now we still have this problem with the uneven of histogram because we're not starting down at zero. So let me right click this, format axis. This comes up and let me put in zero here. Zero, hit return, and there we go, we've got that. So now we have our two histograms for our two die rolls. Oh, well, so far so good. Now what I want to do is I want to compute 
the sum of these two numbers pairwise all the way down the two columns and then I want to do a histogram for that sum so let me put right in here let me put sum Here, let me write it like this. Die 1 plus die 2. Die 1 plus die 2. So right here I'm going to put equals. And the equal is going to be this plus this hit return and it gives me 1 plus 5 is equal to 6 hey that's great now I want to fill in all the remaining hundred thousand sums okay well first of all let me copy this copy the formula of what's in that cell so there I'll copy now I'll click here and I have F3. I'm going to put F3 colon. F1000000. F100001. Hit return. Now I do paste. And it all the cells all the way down have that, f that formula plugged into them. So this should be then the sum of the two independent rolls of die 1 and die 2. Now these bins aren't good enough because when I sum two six-sided die like this the numbers can range in value from 2 to 12. So I'm going to need a new histogram. Now let me put another bins here. I guess I could call this bins 2. Okay, put another bins. And now I want this to go 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. 2, 3, 4. Now let me click, shift click, and let me drag that down to where I get 12 right there. Okay, so this is my new, except some of these are hidden behind that chart. It's okay. Now I want to do the histogram for the sum, die 1 plus die 2, where these are the bins. So let's see, let's do that, see if we can get it right this time. Okay, now um, I go down to 2, okay, 2 to 12, 2, right? So what was that? Um, this would be... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I want to go right here to this. So that looks like I'm going down to uh, 12. So I would select and then go down to 12. That's 11, I think. 12. Mm, uh, that looks like. 13 there there's 2 to 12 uh, why'd I do that 2 to 12 now I want to put equals frequency for the data I'm putting in F2 colon F100001 comma and for the bins I'm doing G2 colon G12 And now, okay, I want to make sure I just don't hit return. I do Control-Shift-Return. 
and then that fills in these bins. Okay, let me move that over so I can see them all here. Now I want to graph on a histogram these numbers, so I select them all. Let me put up here uh, histogram sum move this over a bit there we go now I can select this all the way down to here go to insert here recommended chart right here and um, there I have it histogram sum let me drag this thing down a bit There we go. Okay, so I have histograms for the individual die rolls, and I have a histogram for the sum of the two dice, die rolls here. And uh, so I can, last thing I might want to do is neaten up this chart a little bit. Let's see, one thing I could select everything across the top row and do that and then I could put a background little background there to uh, make it look a little bit nicer let's say right there that's a background okay so I think that's all I want to do so here's what I have I've used the random number generator and the integer function to produce a simulation of die rolls to get integers 1 through 6 on each of two die. I generated the histograms of both of those experiments um, with 100,000 simulated rolls each. I've summed up the two rolls for two die and I've generated the histogram of that sum. Now Hopefully you've seen something like this before. Notice that this isn't going all the way out to 12. Uh, 1, okay. So, uh, okay, that's because I should uh, go in actually and change this axis. I'll leave that for you to do right here to go from 2 to 12 because this is incorrect 1 to 11 down here it should be going from 2 to 12 and um, so with that uh, like I said hopefully you've seen this before this type of result is that if you take two uniformly distributed random variables and these are uniformly distributed with uh, equal likelihood for each number and you they're identically distributed and then you and they're independent and you add them together you should get a triangular distribution as uh, as is shown right here and um, so uh, with that uh, let me just point out if you want to get these right numbers right down here um, maybe the easiest way to do it is just simply replot this and you can replot it just by selecting from here to here select both columns there and then it'll generate use this as the x-axis coordinates so I think that's it for this example this is a, actually a homework problem I'm assigning so I've given you uh, let's say 95 percent of, of uh, how to do this problem the only thing remaining is fixing this x-axis down here right here so good luck